Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be taking part in the 8 Pen Questions YouTube Anniversary Hop, which was um, created for the Found Pen community by um, Simona and Leanne Likes. I'm really excited to do this. I'm kind of almost half expecting this to be my fifth pen video in a row without any comments, but you know, whatever. We'll see what happens in my video. I'm filming this on the 29th of March, but it's going to go live on, at 6 a.m. on the 30th of March. Just in case you thought I was violating Shabbos to post a video, then no, I'm absolutely filming this on a Friday before um, Shabbos begins. And anyway, I will be um, putting a link down in the description box to the um, playlist. You guys can check out all the other um, lovely people who have done prior videos. And I also have to mention the person who did the video before me, that's um, Galen. I will also put that obviously link in my um, description box. And and I haven't um, been um, notified yet if anyone is going after me. Like, but if someone is, obviously I will like retroactively add that person to the description box. And so let's just um, start answering the questions. Number one, when and how did your fountain pen journey begin? I got a pack of pens my senior year of high school that must have been fiber tip pens or something very similar, which had fountain pen like ink and many pr pretty colors. I obviously don't have the you know, time right now to go out to the garage and dig out the notebooks I wrote in with them, but I definitely remember them very much looking like fountain pen ink and from the descriptions of different pens I was pulling up in preparation for writing the script, that, that, that was the only kind of pen it could have been. It definitely did not have like the fountain pen nib, but I know it wasn't a ballpoint or roller roller baller and it wasn't gel pen either. So like the only re remaining realistic choice could have been, you know, fiber tip pens. And actually that makes me want to, you know, buy some more or check them out again because I did like them back in the day. And they had um, fountain pen like ink in many pretty colors. I really enjoyed the experience, though after they all ran out, I went back to ballpoints and many for many, many years. That was pretty much, you know, all I knew. I stuck with that. And if you didn't already know, I'm a writer and I've written a lot of my, you know, first drafts and stuff by hand over the years and also, you know, done a lot of journaling. So basically I'm, I was, I've was i constantly been writing basically since I found out literally how to write when I was, you know, like four years old. It was only in March of 2019 that I switched over to fountain pens. But uh, you know, when I was, you know, like in between like inks and like waiting to borrow the syringe before I got my own, I would, you know, again, go back to using ballpoints in my journal. So obviously it wasn't, you know, like quite 100% full-time, but it was like, I guess like 95 or so percent full-time writing with fountain pens by that point. My father gave me an old orange Lamy from his collection, which he didn't use anymore, saying he thought it might elevate my writing experience, particularly because like he obviously knows how much I write. It took a while to get used to, and I got very lucky that the, that the paper of my journal, Canada, was rather fountain pen friendly for being a regular CVS notebook made in the U.S., I didn't even think I had to use special paper for a fountain pen. I just, you know, started doing it. My next journal, Mary, whom I began that June, also is quite fountain pen friendly. Despite being a Mead notebook um, made in the USA and right here in um, Canada, this is the first um, time I wrote in fountain pens in her um, March um, 30, 21st, um, 2019. You can see, obviously, that's the ballpoint before then, and I just, like, continued using all the lovely colors and you can obviously see like there are times when I went back to writing with ballpoint and then again like the fountain pen ink so obviously I did not yet have my own supplies of ink at the moment and like it's it Canada was I I'm sorry this is a whole other thing but I'm long overdue to make a new a video and updated blog post about my journaling history but you can see look there's no any ghosting or bleeding so this was like a really perfect um notebook for it and I name all of my journals I will be talking about that in my um journaling video which I eventually do and this is um Mary my next journal after this I'm currently on another journal named Magnolia for the first time not in a five subject notebook which feels kind of wrong and you can see look this is also really really like nice paper for being like made in the USA just a fairly cheap mead notebook no like, ghosting or bleeding at all and even later when I started using like all sorts of like awesome colors it still wasn't you know like fading through and when I was using like even some medium nibs this was just you know like really really great paper although obviously I will be using higher quality notebooks in future when I um, run out of um, space in Magnolia. In December 2020 my father gave me a purple Lamy a bit higher end for a Hanukkah or birthday gift and I continued using it to journal and write in my notebooks for planning and researching books. It was only in 2023 that I finally began expanding into a larger collection and much wider variety once I realized I could have pens with beautiful designs, patterns, and colors, and different shapes and sizes, I began making up for lost time. And I'm, I, I'll, I'll, first I'll show you guys either the, the purple and the orange on um, Lamy's. You can see um, 
right here, the second and um, third pens right here. Those were the first um, fountain pens which I ever used. Maybe like many years ago in art class or something or just someone was letting us borrow it in school, I might have used the fountain pen then. But like that's really like the first time the orange and purple that I really like, you know, remember consciously using fountain pens. Number two, favorite inks in the beginning. What are your go-to inks now? In the beginning, I was all about purple inks or very dark blues that were close enough for hand grenades. I used a lot of Levenger Regal, Cobalt Blue, and Empyrean, and Private Reserve Tanzanite. Much later, I began branching out into other shades of blue and Private Reserve, and that's like a, the reason I started like getting into trying to experiment with other colors, particularly shades of blue. That's a whole like off-topic, off complicated subject for its own post, and I will probably broach on that when I do my um, future video about journaling. It's a very bad habit of mine that once I get familiar and comfortable with something like, say, inks, music, actors, etc., I'm very reluctant to branch out and take a chance on something or someone new, like, for example, oh, I'm not familiar with all these songs. I don't know if I should buy a whole album because what if I don't like them or I don't like the artist in general or I'm not really digging this particular color why would I want to buy even like a small sample bottle and I might not really like it and I already know I love the purple and blue why you know try anything different and since I've begun buying my own supply of inks instead of being limited to the pre-existing ones already in the house I most love Pilot Hiroshi Zuku and Diamine and can't wait to get many more colors I also no longer limit myself to purple and dark blue but now also love writing with greens, oranges, and dark pinks. Number three, how have your ink and pen tastes changed over time? As above mentioned, I no longer feel bound to only using the inks in the communal supply. The major reason I finally began buying my own inks already was because there wasn't enough variety in the colors I most love. And there weren't certain other colors at all. Like, for example, well, there were some greens, but there weren't the kind of greens I was really, you know, interested in. And there just weren't any reds at all and just like no oranges. And I just, you know, obviously you need to have your own ink instead of just constantly, you know, borrowing or using someone else's. Even if, even if that person doesn't really use like fountain pens anymore and there's lots of ink for the taking and he doesn't mind you dipping into his supply all the time, you just at some point you need to have like independence and buy your own ink already because what someone else likes might not necessarily be what you like all the time. And oh, and this is the point I was just um, making right in the script. Only using inks someone else bought, despite not all of them being to my own particular personal tastes. It's like only wearing hand-me-down clothes or letting your parents-in-law choose your children's names. Like seriously, why would you let someone else make that kind of like decision for you on your own behalf? I still most love purples and blues, but I'm developing an appreciation for many different shades and hues of them, and in process of learning which greens and reds most appeal to me. Like, for example, I like the, in, a lot, really, really like true greens and true reds. I'm not so, I mean, obviously they have their place, but I'm not so fond of ones that have like red with a more brownish undertone, and it looks kind of like brown on the page. I just want something bright and happy red, or a, I want a green that's actually like bright green or like true green, like, you know, emerald, like moss, like malachite, something like that jade instead of, oh, something that looks practically black when it comes out on the page. If I wanted black ink, I would write with deliberately, you know, specifically black ink. In the beginning, all I cared about was having a pen to write with, the orange and purple lamis I previously showed you guys, and didn't think I needed anything else, despite the time-consuming process of cleaning it, filling the cartridge with new ink, and putting the pen back together. Until I started building my collection and trying new things, I honestly thought you were supposed to be pens. I'm sorry, pens were supposed to be filled with a cartridge and syringe. I didn't even know that was called a cartridge. I thought it was the normal ink reservoir found in all pens. Like seriously, although I did buy my own syringe later from Fountain Pen Revolution, but since I primarily like almost always now use like other types of pens, I just don't really like need it at all anymore. Now I prefer converter filled pens. Though I've really grown to love Opus 88's eyedropper pocket pens, and one of my current favorite pens is a piston filler. All I cared about at the start was having something to write with, but eventually I felt like it was time to upgrade already and get some pens that were more than just like functional and basic. My favorites now are Leonardo Memento Zero, Fountain Pen Revolution, Jaipur a Version 2, Retro 51, Autumn Leaves, Benue, and my Opus 88 Blizzard and Sakura fountain pens. Lamy pens are great workhorses, like not throwing any shade at them at all. They're like wonderful. You know, German ingenuity is awesome. But per personally, more for things like my 
writing outlines and um, research notes in my books for like my historical fiction. I'll just um, show you guys. This is um, the Jaipur version too. I also have this in orange and purple, but still haven't filled them up yet. I just really love how this writes. It's a fine point, and I love you know like matching it to blue. And this is a um, Retro Fifty One Rescue um, version. Um, for version four of their like dog and cat rescues like pen holder it's really awesome i also have the ballpoint pens that match and this is a sakura fountain pen i just got this recently my first new fountain pen of the year i really really you know love it already and this is the um Ra ragnoli um leonardo memento zero I, I love this one so much it's absolutely it might even be my you know top um favorite pen i know this is another of my favorite pens also the leonardo memento zero the Foresta Umbra. I just love this so much. I have like unboxing videos of this in the um, venue. I'm hand painted Dia de los Muertos pen, which I got from Cult Pens in the UK. And this was only one of 100. So, you know, I really had to jump on that. It, it, it's one of the pens that's after my m m after my own like macabre Halloween loving heart. Like I couldn't not have this just so absolutely, you know, wonderful. And I do have future videos um, planned about like pen tours and favorite pens and like, you know, most meaningful pens, which aren't necessarily my, you know, favorite pens and fun stuff like that. I also initially liked fine and extra fine nibs most and found medium too uncomfortably thick unless I angled the pen at just the right angle. That happened to me when I got the um, Herman Melville pen from um, Le Boeuf. It was the only one left or at least at the site I got it from and like medium was the only choice and I was like wow this is like this isn't how I'm used to. This is way more like, this is a lot wider than I like, usually write with. It's using so much ink. I have to do it at just the right angle. But over time, I got used to it. And I, now I realize, oh, that's really good for showing off special inks. You don't want to like, risk clogging the feet or, or particularly of an expensive pen. Like if you're like, using like shimmer ink or something fun like that. So sometimes a medium is just what you need or something even larger than that. And so while I still like fines very much, like particularly for like, you know, everyday writing in a journal and taking notes for my books and stuff, I'm getting more into mediums because they better show off shimmer inks and other inks with special properties. I'm not sure if I want more than the one broad I already have or a second stub. They might love both of those pens, but those are enough for now to fully appreciate the above mentioned um, special types of inks. This is my um, one um, stub nib. This is a pilot, which is um, a birthday present for this um, past December 1.1. And this is my um, first, um, well, actually, I do. I technically have two broad pens, but my other broad pen is a Japanese broad, so it's more like a Western medium. I do love that one a lot. And this is my proper Western broad, the Benyu um, Hanukkah Talisman pen. This is, like, so emotionally meaningful to me, particularly during this, you know, terrifying time of rising anti-Semitism. It's, you know, the bold, uh, the broad nib reminds me to always be, like, broad, like, open, loud proud in my um, Judaism and um, Jewish peoplehood. Number four, are there inks and pens you have yet to try but would like to? I'm very interested in trying out some brown, bronze, and yellow inks, though they have to look aesthetically pleasing. And the yellow can't be so light it blends into the paper or makes my eyes hurt. If it is like that and I find it after the fact, I, it would probably be, you know, for the best just to use it for art and stuff like that. Specific ink brands on my bucket list include Robert Oster, Ferris Wheel Press, and Colorverse. I'd also like to get some more of the Monte Verde Sweet Life set and try some more of their other inks. As for pens, I would love to try Narwhal, Pelican, Namiki, Omas, and Penlux, but obviously, you know, I don't have an unlimited um, budget. I'm, you know, this is like an expensive hobby. It doesn't have to be most, of, like pretty much all of my pens are under a hundred dollars, but you know, sometimes it can like really add up and like sometimes you just wanna, well, not sometimes, you should always want to save towards a, pen that's very expensive and sometimes the cheaper pens are even the ones that are like you know mid range they're more meaningful to you you like them more and they write better than some pens that are you know like 500 bucks like a thousand like two thousand ten thousand whatever you know it's just about the experience you have with them and I know there is like a, a it's different for like some people but after some point there's like a a vanishing or a diminishing return sorry like when it's you're mostly really only paying for the brand name or the materials like for example there's like real diamonds in the pen or it's like solid like 21 karat gold or something like that it's not about like oh an improved a vastly markedly improved writing experience it's just like oh the brand name and luxury items in the pen number five what is your holy grail pen i will be i'm inserting some pictures of this uh, these pens i would absolutely love all three of these pens as a dentista i can't resist monte grappa's divina commedia collection 
Of the three, I of course most like Purgatorio, since that's my favorite canticle for so many reasons. I do have a whole playlist called All About Dante and the Divine Comedy. If you guys are interested, you can check that out. The seven terraces are depicted and named on the barrel and cap, with a major scene from each, and the mountain landscape of Mount Purgatorio on the very bottom, and the earthly paradise, i.e. the Garden of Eden, on top. The cap also has a golden key, recalling the key to purgatory proper Dante gets from the angel, from the angel who is um, guarding the gates in um, Canto 9. And I will, um, this is just such a beautiful scene. This might be my actual, my absolute um, favorite um, Canto in um, Purgatorio. Ashes or dry earth that has just been quarried would share one color with his robe. And from beneath that robe, he drew two keys. The one was made of gold, the other was of silver. First with the white, then with the yellow key, he plied the gate so as to satisfy me. Whenever one of these keys fails, not turning appropriately in the lock, he said to us, this gate of entry does not open. One is more precious, but the other needs much art and skill before it will unlock. That is the key that must undo the knot. These I received from Peter, and he taught me rather to err in opening than in keeping this portal shut. Whenever souls pray humbly, then he pushed back the panels of the holy gate, saying, Enter, but I warn you, he who would look back returns again outside. And when the panels of that sacred portal, which are of massive and resounding metal, turned in their hinges, then even Tarpeia, which good Metellus was removed, when good Metellus was removed from it, for which that rock was left impoverished, did not roar so, nor show itself so stubborn. Hearing that gate resound, I turned attentive, I seemed to hear, inside, in words that mingled, with gentle music, te deum la, la, laudamus. And what I heard gave me the very same impression one is used to getting when one hears a song accompanied by organ, and now the words are clear, and now are lost. And this is an Alan Mandelbaum translation. But alas, even if it weren't sold out, I can't justify spending almost $5,500 on a pen converted from euros. The Inferno pen is barely less expensive, at least with the silver nib. The gold price isn't shown on the website. And the Paradiso pen costs over $7,000, like, almost like certainly because it has real gems on it, including what look like real diamonds. These pens are absolutely so beautiful. They would be so personally meaningful to me as a Dantista. But again, it's, you know, really just a pen in the long run. Why would I like want to spend nearly that much money? I can, you know, show my love and appreciation for Dante in other ways. And I, I should also mention they made these in, in 2021 for the 700th anniversary of his death, which I made a lot of like blog posts and videos about that myself for that, like, you know, momentous um, occasion. Number six, how many pens do you currently own? 31 plus my dip pen. Like, I know that seems like a lot, particularly because I got so many of them, like, so close together. But, you know, it's, now it's time to, like, slow down, be more responsible about spending and just, like, get pens more carefully and considerately, like, maybe one every like, few months or, like, two a year or something like that. I've just focused more on inks and pen accessories as I need them and can justify the cost. Number seven. Do you have a limit on pens or inks in your collection? Is it a number? Is it a feeling? When do you know you have reached your maximum? I know this is a very uncharacteristic, a shocking admission for someone who prides myself on being pro-science and guided by the principles of skip skeptical inquiry about many things, but not everything. But I've always put a lot of stock in auspicious and inauspicious numbers and dates. Like, you know, my lucky number is 11. I've mentioned it in so many um, prior videos. Hence, it would be nice to have a collection of pens. And one of my lucky numbers, my highest lucky number is 36, which is um, 18 times 2, like 18 high like represents life. It's a very lucky number in um, Judaism and Jewish culture. So we like to give charity in multiples of 18. And I was um, born on the 18th of December. So, you know, I'm blessed with that number from birth. And 36 also seems like a good limit of not too many and not too few. At that number, the collection is realistically manageable. Instead of having so many pens, I forget a lot of them exist and neglect them for long stretches of time. And I know many people might think, oh, 36, that's so many. How you're going to forget? But they all fit in the same like, carrying case. And it's not like, you know, they're hanging out all over your home with hundreds of pens, like forgetting you own them. It's like, you know what all is there and you can spend like time on each of them instead of like overwhelming number of pens. As for inks, I think it's good to have a manageable number too. Though since inks tend to be much cheaper than a lot of pens, relatively speaking, it's not as unrealistic to have more inks than pens. Having a large collection also allows the chance to match inks to pens, or sometimes you just want contrasting colors. Like for example, I currently have one of my um, blue pens inked with a green ink, which is you know kind of a fun effect. 
And so you also, you allowed, you can match the inks to pens and use seasonal colors, as well as having multiple shades and hues of a color to choose from. It's kind of like how it's more doable for the average person to keep a few dozen pet reptiles instead of a few dozen dogs or cats, unless you're, sorry, not sorry, like one of those uh, irresponsible pet tubers. OMG, meet my 120 animals. And oh, look at me. I just bought 20 new snakes for more, you know, clickbait and views, even though like uh, what normal people should not be keeping nearly that many pets. But it is more, you know, like affordable and like space-wise practical and realistic to keep a larger number of small animals like, you know, reptiles and amphibians and big ones like dogs and cats. Number eight, consequently, what would you do if another pen slash ink came along? There's always room for one more if it's the right pen and ink, even if it wasn't what we ideally planned. A lot of couples, for example, have a surprise baby years after they thought they were done. And once the baby is born, they can't imagine him or her not being part of their family. Likewise, many people who didn't, who didn't think they could ever have another pet end up opening their hearts to a, new, to a new fur baby whom they can't imagine life without. So it's just that way with pens too. Maybe I'll see a perfect one on a website like, you know, years after, or maybe like even one day after I add lucky number 36 to my collection. And oh, it's just so beautiful. It's speaking to my heart. I can't not have it. Like maybe it's a Halloween themed pen, which I could not resist or my favorite color purple. It has, you know, Dante and symbolism like the cosmos something like really like emotionally meaningful to me and you know, oh how could I pass this up it just like belongs in my collection or like the same thing for inks oh I never thought I could love this color but wow this is totally speaking to me like in you go like push that you know purchasing button and like get it and, and, and you instantly and I would instantly love it once I have it and couldn't imagine not having it Thank you very much for watching to the end. Um, please, please um, leave a comment. I really enjoy um, having conversations with you guys, and I do want to make um, more friends on YouTube. I know I primarily do booktube and authortube content, but I am hoping to do more on um, pen content, even though like people haven't been commenting at all on my recent pen videos. So, you know, maybe the algorithm just isn't like promoting me enough or I need to like make more friends in the pen community before people start taking notice. But anyway, I really do like appreciate having like engagements with people on YouTube. So I feel like, you know, my people are actually enjoying and appreciating all the, you know, the time and effort I put into making these videos. And I will see you guys again very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.